Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything and welcome back to another episode of Appreciating Yu-Gi-Oh! The series where me and my friend Rarity Fangirl31 do a deep dive into every single thing on Yu-Gi-Oh! First episode was the original manga, last episode which is up on the channel um, was Dark Side of Dimensions and the Transcend Game Manga and in this episode we are going to be talking about the original Duel Monsters anime rarity as always thank you for coming on and joining me thank you so much dylan i'm so excited to talk about um this anime with you all um dm is a classic um we're gonna be talking about just to kind of clarify um we're gonna be talking only about the japanese version of the show for today the four kids dub will probably be either the next video or the video after this um, because we thought that one, along with its original properties, Capsule Monsters and Pyramid of Light, which were 4K creations, deserve their own video for the nostalgia and the impact and how it's a, basically a totally different show anyway. But we've discussed that before. Yeah, so DM. DM, if you guys, if you remember back on my channel years ago, I did a tier list. People have been asking me to update it. Um, but I haven't seen Sevens all the way yet, and Go Rush is still airing, so I can't really rank it any differently. But DM is my third favorite of the Yu-Gi-Ohs, and that hasn't really changed. At least of the animes, anyway. I still, as I stand by what I said, that the Yu-Gi-Oh manga is the best piece of Yu-Gi-Oh media that we've ever had. But the Duel Monsters anime is definitely in the top three. Because um, I actually like a lot of the additions they had, depending in a vacuum. I guess, like, I think, like, that's an interesting place to start, I guess, maybe. Yeah, well, is, right, is the differences, and, well, yep. Yeah. yeah, so when did you first see the sub, I guess probably is a better question. When did you first see the Japanese version? Because you, you and I are probably in the camp of we saw the English version first. Yeah, I want to say I first saw the sub in 20, maybe 14, um, probably, I think it was around the end of Zexel, the start of Arc 5, so, right, that would have been, like, 14, 15, um, mm -hmm. if my memory serves correct, but yeah, that is when I, I honestly, I rewatched the, so this is how I watched the sub of Yu-Gi-Oh! I rewatched the entire dub in its entirety, loved it, um, that was back, like, 2013, moved on to GX, watched the entire dub, thought it was crazy that the main character died at the end, and then <laughs> looked it up, because I wanted to see what people were saying about it, and then realized, oh, the main character of GX did not die at the end of, of the show, it's just the dub did not dub the entire final season. I said, all right, well, I guess I got to watch it um, subtitled. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Season 4 was the first subbed anime in general I've ever watched. Watched it subbed, absolutely loved it. And then I went back to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! immediately and started watching it subbed, fell in love with it, and watched it in probably like a one to two month period. Um, yeah. And it, it, I was just shocked at how different of a show it was. I mean, totally, totally different. Um, and so that is a big reason why we decided to talk about only the Japanese version in this video. And we'll talk about the dub in a different video. Um, the big difference it well i'll start with you rarity when did you first see the uh the sub uh sometime i'd say because the first Yu-Gi-Oh i or actually the first subbed anime i ever saw was arc 5 subbed because i Interesting. was because I, I, yeah. I watched arc 5 in dub first when it was airing on tv and then i wanted to catch up because i was so invested and then i eventually discovered the fandom and here we are um there that was my story um so eventually um i looked up the other shows i think dm was one of the last ones that i was saw because i loved the four kids version so much i'm like do i really not want to hear eric stewart play kaiba do i <laughs> and um but i did i eventually got through it and the voices took a while to get used to not that the performances are bad far from it they're amazing um but like those voices are so iconic in your head and I've I've been someone who generally usually picks a version of a show to stick to or sub of dub these days. Um, like I talked about Spy Family in the previous video, I've watched that in dub and going to the sub, while I could watch it, it's still great. I just prefer the dub because number one, at least that one's accurate to the actual script and it's just what I've been used to hearing. Um, so actually it was pretty, um, pretty like I would say like sometime 2017, 2018, I think somewhere around there. But I think I, I fully rewatched most of it in preparation for this podcast over the last few months. And it is a totally different vibe. And it there's so much philosophical stuff they added and like or just the way that they expanded upon the manga. And it's totally, totally different, even though the still message of friendship and unity and overcoming hatred is the same. It just, there's not as much, like, crack, um, you know, um, one-liners. You know, witty one-liners. 
which yes. are great, um, which I love that. But there's a lot more. They obviously there's none of the stuff that's censored. Like, I'll, there's some heavy stuff. Like, um, we'll talk about season four um, at some point in this video. But the stuff with um, I forget what his Japanese name is. Um, I think it's Amelna, the Japanese name. I'm um, Alistair, right? The, the guy who was a Kaiba, right? Yeah, and Doma. You yep, seeing yep. the war, especially to these days, hits even harder. Like, I said this again, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! being hitting, but seeing that the other day, because I was re-watching that duel because it's one of my favorite duels in that season, I was just like, darn, this is so powerful. Like, oh. And the fact this isn't a card game show still amazes me, because Yu-Gi-Oh! has been able to tell us profound storytelling since the beginning. And that's always so powerful, but it, there's just so many, like, deeper messages. I'm not that saying there isn't any in the original 4Kids version, of course. They came from this original source material, it's just presented in a very more mature way. It doesn't feel the same. Though the duel is a pretty much similar because, well, it's a card game, right? Like, th there's only so much you can translate out of it besides, again, the witty one-liners. Um, though there is still some of that to a degree. I think a lot of the experience just has to do with the delivery and the music. Oh, the music. Uh, the yeah. Japanese soundtrack of Yu-Gi-Oh! has such a... I don't know how to describe its vibe. It's very well orchestrated and very well done. But there's like um, just some of the motifs and the light motifs, like all the little symbolism in there um, that gets thrown in, like in all of that stuff. It's just it's just a completely different experience, a very good experience, but very, very different. And I think that if you showed people, because some people think, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh is for kids, you know, all that stuff. I think if you showed them this, that would probably change their tune. That and 5Ds, obviously. Those are two, some of the most dark stuff we've ever gotten. And Brains, um, some of our more darker Yu-Gi-Oh content. So, um, I guess my question now is, because we know the DM anime had a lot of changes. Um, both to adding in additional episodes, adding in additional lines for characters, and additional changing up the events to some degree. Or rather, it was because of, you know, like, changing like the, the flesh-eating bugs with my, you know, to sand, things like that. Stuff I know you've discussed in your shorts videos right, right. Um, as well. But I think a lot of the changes did make sense for an anime, because anime and manga are two different mediums, right? Yep, yep. And... I think one of the biggest benefits, and I'll get my fangirling out of the way now, is honestly with Kaiba and Mokuba, because Mokuba gets a lot more to do, which is great, because in the not to say he doesn't do anything in the manga, but he doesn't have as much substantial um, moments. But he's always present. He has more dialogue. He has some more agency. It's really, really nice just to see that. And you really get to see Kaiba as a brother. And I don't know about other Kaiba fangirls out there besides me, but I think that Kaiba, part of his appeal is that, oh, he's the, you know, the badass duelist, but he has a soft side for his little brother. Aww. We sort of forget all the bad stuff he did because he's a nice big brother, right? Right. You know, all, all that stuff, right? And I guess that also leads into all the additional backstory that we got because in the manga, Kaiba Mokuba's backstory is only shown for maybe like four pages in the entire manga, but they got a whole arc. And even then, that's portrayed differently because in the manga, and according to Takahashi's notes, Kaiba is guilt-ridden by killing his father. But in the Japanese version, he's overcome that trauma and doesn't even care. He's just like, y your death's not my fault. That's totally different. And that gives Kaiba a whole degree of perspective in terms of the level of... They basically tore down the abuse, basically, the abuse storyline. And I think Takahashi kept it vague for that kind of reason, because most likely Kaiba wouldn't want us seeing it, so why would he draw it kind of thing. Some authors like to do that, where if it's like, oh, if a character wouldn't want us to see this part of them, maybe we'll just keep it vague, right? Because right. the only time we really get flashbacks from in the manga is really more from Mokuba's perspective, um, more than anything. But yeah, the Kaiba Brothers stuff, great to see, and that kind of leads into the, the Noah arc, which I know you and I have very different opinions about. Um, I we guess don't. we can start there. It's like, that's like the bit, I mean, Legendary Heroes was three episodes long. I don't really count that as a filler arc. It was a filler episodes. I don't that, consider that's that an short arc. enough where I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I don't really yeah, care it's, about it. It was it. cool. I liked the, I liked that arc a lot because it was nice to like have them in like another game. It was kind of, again, alluding back to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! No, putting them in games and things like that. And, um, Dragon Master Knight is always cool to see. And the yep. outfits were cool. 
and getting Mai in there was also nice. And again, more Mokuba agency, woohoo. Um, but the no arc's the first big of the three big filler arcs. Because some people count capsule monsters as part of it. I consider that a spinoff, not a continuation oh, of the fully show agree, at all. Fully agree. Fully yeah. agree. The dub might put it in season five, probably just to like fill out the DVDs and like the, the sections. But I don't consider it. It's a spinoff. I don't consider it canon to the original anime really at all. It's never referenced. And there's clearly some differences in the world anyway. But the Noah arc, I think you and I both agree its biggest issue is the placement. Um, I, I do agree. I, I think that's the biggest issue. Um, again, this is an arc that was not in the original manga. This is the first true and tried filler arc of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime. And um, the placement, just to really quickly recap, you have the Battle City Tournament, which I think is one of the strongest arcs ever in Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, you mm -hmm. count all the way through Go Rush. One of the strongest arcs ever in Yu-Gi-Oh! Some of the most uh, amazing duels, some great development for our cast, an, an incredible tournament, a, an incredible iconic villain. Really two of them running around causing havoc, Bakura and Marek, two villains that I think are both top five villains in the franchise. Um, mm -hmm. So you have the, the villains are great, the characters are great, the plot is great, the mysteries are great, everything is great. And then we interrupt it right before the semifinals begins by going into Noah's virtual world. And I just, the placement has always blown my mind. I get that season four Doma is right after Battle City, so it would have been weird to have two filler arcs back to back, but I think I would we have preferred that. We had two filler that. arcs back to back. We had the KC Grand Championship. There was two filler arcs back to back. Actually, you're right. Yeah, I always forget about that because that's shorter, but you're right. That absolutely is a filler arc. So I guess it, to as Rarity brings up, I guess it would have been three filler arcs then, right? Back to back to back. But you know what? I think I would have rather that than have one of the strongest arcs interrupted. And yeah, the placement of it is just crazy to me and I think that is a big issue that a lot of people have and maybe because of that they unfairly judge the virtual world arc now even the contents within that arc I'm not as high on as you are um, I think some of the strongest elements of it are the Kaiba brothers getting expanded on Gozabura Kaiba Kaiba defeating Gozabura Exodia Necros which I actually really like that duel that was uh, really cool his you know really SOB dad using Exodia to try to get in the mind of his son because Kaiba lost to Exodia. You know, I think that was honestly really, really cool. Um, mm -hmm. But the big five, I didn't care for at all. Them taking over Tristan, I didn't care for at all. Um, you know, yeah. so there were a lot of things within that arc I didn't like. But I know the thing that makes the arc so wonderful for you is the Kaiba family expansion. Yes. Um, that's not to say I, I also love the deck master system. I wish they brought that back in yeah, another Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. made that a gimmick. Because it's sort of similar to the skills in Duel Links, if you think about it. Yes, um, yes. Or even similar to the deck leaders in um, Duels of the Rosa, which I know you've recently been streaming. Yes, or um, Castle so Monster Coliseum, which yeah, I just yeah. started recently. Yeah. Yes. So that's um that's a whole thing, which that's another topic. We could go into the video games. Oh, boy. Oh, I, I God, played, I'd love to. I've, 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 I've played quite a few of them. I played a lot of more of the 5Ds ones, but um I would love to get into some of the older ones. Like, Forbidden Memories has such a big fan base still to this day. Like, speedrunners, challenge videos. Forbidden Memories is, like, huge, which it I is. love that, honest. I love that, honestly. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing for me, besides the cool deck master system and some of the dueling action, like I like some of the newer cards they had, like Joey using Mai's card, right? I love some of the newer cards they added for Kaiba's deck as well. Um, Dragon, uh, Mirage Knight, and then Dark Magician, Dra Dark Magician Knight was cool. A lot of the monsters and the cards are really cool. And I love the duel between Noah and Kaiba, not only because it's cool, like the symbolism of Noah's deck, like, you know, the history of humanity, which I thought was really cool because... Of course, they cut a lot of the religious imagery of that out. I think the inclusion of Noah, while not needed, I think, I kind of wish he didn't die. I understand they couldn't keep him around because, you know, Phil, he's not in the manga at all. But I think, like, Gozaboro having a son who was basically a mirror to Kaiba in a way. And I like the bond that eventually Mokuba basically got through to him. Again, more Mokuba content. As a Mokuba fan, obviously, I love all the Mokuba content, but... I still think one of my favorite scenes in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! history, and this is including every other show, is when Kaiba summons the Blue Eyes, and we learn later that if he didn't summon the Blue Eyes, he would have won with last turn off of Different Dimension Dragon, right? Because of its effect to come back, right? Mm -hmm. So, and Yugi even says that. He literally gives up victory for the sake of his brother, and he's so vulnerable and kind of... Im 
I'm, I'll talk about this scene probably in the dub video too, because that's one of, I think, Eric Seward's best performances of Kaiba. But the emotion there of... As a younger sibling myself, I really, as I said, I think in the manga video to Kaiba Mokubo a lot with me and one of my older sisters. So seeing that for me always brings a tear to my eye that something, and it's probably the only time you see Kaiba talk about the past in a positive way. Think about that. In front of other people, right? Yeah. Like he was in front of everybody. Like, and that's a big step for him. And on that journey. And I think it was kind of a good stepping stone for Kaiba to fully overcome his past. And I think Yugi getting to pick up the duel right and basically win against impossible BS is always fun, right? And summoning the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, then defusing, you know, some of the duels were really nice. But the Big Five stuff, not a big fan of that. But it was cool to see some of the side characters like Anzu, um, Ryuji, Honda, and um, Shizuka get to duel, which was cool. It was nice to kind of give everybody a duel, but Mogba didn't get one, but it's, it's okay. He's the Capsule Monsters guy anyway. Which, I have feelings that he wasn't included in the Capsule Monsters thing, because that's his game, but that, that, that's, for, that's for that video. Um, I will talk about that. Yeah. So the Noah arc, I would say it's my favorite because I'm biased towards those elements. Like, I really love that you get to see, slowly over the course of the flashbacks, Kaiba become the man that we know him to be now. Like, where those things came from. As a Kaiba fan, I really love that. Um, but I think just that kind of speaks in general, but the anime did really well of expanding upon some of these little bits of the manga or these characters. Like, Joey got a lot in the anime he didn't get in the manga. He got a lot. Joey got a ton of different stuff, but then they also, in, like, for example, I think his last duel being against Siegfried, where he basically regressed as a character, really upset me. <laughs> Because he basically did everything at the beginning. Which is funny because the duel before that against Grandpa, I think, was one of Joey's best duels. He was basically using everything he had learned, right, to beat his mentor. And then he throws that all the way in the next duel. Yeah, we'll definitely get to the uh that that arc as well. Um, because that was that there were a lot of things in that arc that surprised me, and we'll we'll get to that, of course. But yeah, sticking sticking with the virtual world, yeah, I mean the Kaiba family expansion was really, really cool. I, I, I definitely um, wouldn't argue that. It was definitely the best part of the arc. The Deckmaster gimmicks were cool. It's just my big issue with it. Well, my biggest issue is obviously the placement. My other big issue with it, of course, is the, the fact that, like, I did not care for any of the big five characters. Yeah. And, you know, there were five, I think in total, there were six duels with the big five characters you know you had each member of the big five duel and then you had the big five duel controlling tristan's body against yugi and joey that final duel wasn't terrible but because i just didn't care about any of them it just felt like a lot of wasted time before mm -hmm. we got to the good stuff and so i think that's why i do view the arc yeah. more negatively i mean what did you think of the the big five did you uh, did you like I, them at all i i think the, i think the possessing monsters um was kind of interesting it was kind of cool to see why each of them what they did in the company because the big five were in the manga they were basically yeah, they the top were. five yep, shareholders yep, yep. we didn't really know who they were we didn't know the personality so it was kind of interesting to see like the inner workings of Kaiba Corp. If you're into business at all, it's kind of interesting to see each of their roles in the company. But aside from that, I remember when I rewatched those duels, I usually, I would love for someone to make a super cut. Um, the entire virtual world arc, but it's just the Kaiba brothers, so this skips around. Because I remember sometimes in my rewatch, I'm like, okay, I don't want to see the duel. I want to see the Kaiba brothers flashback. I know where it is. Okay, there it is. Skip on to the next thing. Um, during um, some of my rewatches, I, I kept tempted of doing that. And then I went back and watched the whole thing, obviously, for... Um, for review purposes but but yeah i wasn't really a biggest fan of them as characters but i don't think we're supposed to be not really um they're all a bunch of jerks and like sleaze bags like we're not supposed to like them though i can't say the same for noah because again i think noah was a fine enough character but i understand that they needed to he was only one guy right so they had to give him underlings you know and things like that. So I can understand why that would bring down the arc in your opinion, but I've always kind of, I think we've talked about this before of you and I, we're always the kind of people to see like the diamonds in the rough kind of thing where, yep. or the glass is like half full instead of half empty, right? Um, and I think the virtual word arc has some of the most emotional moments, especially some of the best performances from Kaiba Seiyu because one of the things I love about his performance is that when he talks about his brother, his voice gets noticeably softer and that's just a really nice touch on the actor's part. 
Because Kaiba usually probably wouldn't talk to the same arrogant way to his family, the only person in the world he cares about other than himself, right? It's, it's nice. Um, again, the placement is a little weird, but I do, I do think that it's, again, it was, it was a Kaiba arc. Which makes me sad he wasn't the one to beat Noah and had to be Yugi, right? Because that was more his storyline. And it's sort of a similar way that you could argue about the Casey arc as well, because that tournament is for Kaiba's company to basically, you know, get the, the shared hold. Everyone's like faith in them back after um, Doma took over the company, right? And Kaiba gets a cool duel, but he doesn't really do much else. But I guess that's kind of, again, to show Kaiba more as the president of Kaiba Corp actually doing his job as opposed to Kaiba the Duelist, which I do like to see that business side of Kaiba because that is something I think that isn't as explored as much. Um, again, the multifacets of that. Yeah, yeah, no, um, um, well said, well said regarding that. Um, um, so definitely Doma. leave us your <laughs> opinions on that arc down below. Um, very, very interested. I also did like that um, in that three person duel with Serenity, Tristan and Duke, like, Tristan lost like at least one I know they still won as a group but like at least there was like a little bit of like a shock death in that and of course that mm -hmm. led of course to Tristan being possessed it wasn't just like they all defeated the big five um even though they kind of did I know I, I think it was Nesbit right was the one who dueled the three of them yeah um, yeah. It was him, yeah. yeah it's hard for I I mean, I remember Crump, but he's just like you, you, the penguin you remember, dude. You, you, were, you also remember because the abridge made it funny. Penguins. Well, that's true. Yeah, the abridge definitely, you know, um, was pretty that's good a, in that arc. Yep. But yeah, but yeah, you know, it's um, it, it's interesting. Let us know all your thoughts on that arc down below, and I would love to um, to uh, move on to Doma. I think Doma uh... is an arc that a lot of people, when it comes to filler, prefer. Um. I am I'm very mixed when it comes to Doma and I always have been. I think the 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 villainous characters are cool. I think their backstories are really cool, but there's a lot of things that happen with our main crew and with the story in general that just feels weird and I don't know, I, it's it's hard for me to explain, but what are, what are your general thoughts on Doma? I think Doma, um, it's funny because me and um, one of my best friends are very different. Um, they are an avid Dova lover. I am probably an avid Dota hater. Not that it's all bad. I don't think I don't think there's ever, really ever been an arc in Yu-Gi-Oh that I totally hate. I always try to find something good about it. Even the Battle Beast arc, you know, the worst arc could probably most people think of Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, yeah. we'll talk about that when we get to arc five, which that'll pro that'll probably be a three hour video. I'm just kidding because I could go on with arc five forever, but we're not, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, but Doma, I love, I like the character designs. I love the villains. I like they did something with Mai that was really cool. Like the, the cards were cool. Like the guardian monsters, the freaking robot punching deck that Valen had. That was super cool. Um, the Seal of Ori Calculus was a real threat. Um, but a lot of our characters either acted a little bit out of character or stupid because a tab <laughs> doing the Seal of Ori Calculus always felt so forced to me. I do not think he would do anything to put Yugi in danger because there was no danger. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very fair, right? That was, I know that is a big critical um, criticism of the Doma arc that Yami Yugi acted very out of character in order to just kind of advance the plot. And while it led to, I think, one of the most shocking results in Yu-Gi-Oh! history and, and, a, and a cool moment, it, it did feel... A little bit forced, as you said. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that. I do I do think, though, it also takes Yugi out of the story, which um, I talked about this, I believe, in the manga video, um, and I was praising Yugi's involvement in DSOD. The original Duel Monsters anime added a lot more attempt of doing things. Like, he's the one who got to battle um, Duke Devlin instead of Yugi, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yugi... Yeah, so Yugi got a lot more to do in the manga, and I think the, the anime tended to sideline him a lot more. Um, which I understand a Tem, like what he's supposed to mean and all that stuff. Not to saying the character development between Yugi and Tem isn't great. Not that a Tem isn't great. I like, I like the guy too, but Yugi is the main character. And even to this day, there is not much merch of Yugi Moto. If you think about it, there's always new a Tem and Kaiba merch, but rarely do we also see Yugi Moto thrown into the mix. Right. And it's kind of sad, right? Because he is the, at least... By this point, you know, he is the main character of Yu-Gi-Oh, not a Tem, which most people... I mean, they're probably...
probably kind of like the human ash, right? You could argue they're the deuteragonist, right? But the story is about Yugi and his in his growth, as well as um, you know, them learning from each other and all that beautiful stuff. So the fact that Yugi wasn't in the arc for the most part really kind of saddened me, which I think the KC arc sort of makes up for it, where Atem was kind of encouraging Yugi, like, hey, you are the king of games, get up there, get up there, you know, go, you yeah, know, you yeah, know, yeah. which was really sweet of him. I, I liked that. Plus, there's always the funny moment with the, the heart of the underdog joke in both version. It's very funny um, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the best character stuff, I think Kaiba was in character for the most part. Like, you see him lose his company. I've never seen Kaiba look that depressed in my life when um, Aizano tells him, um, he says, I'm not your boss anymore, basically. I'm not the president. You see him look sad for this one panel. Um, let me find it so I can send it to you in the video. I've never seen Seto Kaiba look that sad in my life. He just looks like um, the pleading emoji, like, oh my gosh, I'm so sad. And it's like, you never see Kaiba get like that, but he literally lost his life's work, even if it was only for a filler arc, right? Like, that's a big deal. <laughs> Like, yeah. he yeah. lost that. Um, yeah. And I also don't think... Um, a lot of the cards were the duels. There's probably, like, no duel in Doma other than, I think, the um, the ones involving Kaiba that I really liked. Again, I'm, I'm not just saying some bias towards a Kaiba fan. I think Kaiba, generally, they kept him in character a lot. And plus, I think his... Again, the whole... Of, of the storylines we have here, his was the most interesting because he literally can't deny his father's company funded war. And he has to deal with that, which is something the manga doesn't really touch on much. Yeah, he destroyed the factory, but what does that mean about the reputation? He worked his butt off to create Kaiba Corp again from the ground up, and he did. So to see that somebody coming in here with all the trauma that his father's weapons had caused is, I think, a brilliant idea. Like, the concept of Melna was absolutely great. And the fact he also was an older brother, Mokuba sort of resembling his younger brother as well, and the toy figure just, ah, oh, my heart. Super well done on emotional storytelling. Anyone that can get emotion out of Kaiba automatically gets my respect because that's when Kaiba, I feel like, gets a lot of his most interesting moments when he's on the, you know, the mask of coldness kind of starts coming off where you start seeing him, like, really emote, I think does really, really well. And I think the great, I think, the, oh yeah, the dragon cards. I love the dragon cards. Tamias, Critias, and Haramos were such cool idea for cards. And yeah. I'm so happy they're finally in the game. We were all waiting for that for years. <laughs> I know, I know, for real. Now, like, I, they're so cool. I will say so. I, there were. I think I'm. I'm a little more positive on the arc overall than than I think you were. So I think it, we're kind of flipped with the uh, with the two main filler arcs, you know, the virtual world and Doma. Because I did feel like there were some really cool duels and moments um, outside of the Kaiba stuff. The Kaiba stuff was really good with um with um Amelna. Amelna, thank you. Yes, um, but I thought the stuff with with Joey and Valen, um, the armor duels, and them just beating okay, the crap out of yeah. each other was really, <laughs> really fun. I Lord thought the, of the two, red. yeah, no, really. I thought the two duels with Yugi and Raphael were cool as well, and a character that I actually do think does get a major benefit from this arc is Mai. Because in the manga, Mai is pretty much done after Battle City. There's really nothing mm -hmm. with her character after the, the Yami Marek duel. Um, and to see her actually get expanded on in the sense of like, all right, well, what does actually happen with Mai after everybody's moved on and now she's left alone dealing with the trauma of the Yami no game versus Yami Marek? Mm -hmm. And to see her yeah. fall into darkness, get involved with this group, I thought made a lot of sense with her character. Yeah. And... She's someone that I actually really enjoyed in the Doma arc, mm -hmm. and I feel like she's better in the anime than she is in the manga because of Ooh. the Doma arc. So I really liked her story in yeah. Doma, and I actually love the duel between her and Joey and, you know, her finally coming to her senses at the end and her breaking kind of free of you know, the, the spell as well in that duel because of the bond with her yeah. and Joey. So I feel like her story was really good in that arc as well. I, I think you could also argue whether it was, again, in character or not, but I can not, it's a fun ride to watch. I think giving Mai the development was really cool. A lot of the new Harpy cards were cool. I love her outfit. Um, yes, I, yes I'll, the I'll, biker I'll, I'll, outfit. I, I, love, I, I, love, I love biker aesthetics. So the whole, the whole villain team being a bunch of bikers, <laughs> I thought was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, the, the Joey and, um, Valen duel was really cool with the punching. I always kind of, I always remember that's in this arc. I always just like, again, I feel like on my rewatches, I'm more just focused on the stuff that I feel like is always just like super stands out to me. I feel like more as opposed to like, 
some other components. But yeah, the Raphael duels were also good. I think the duels were probably the strongest part of this of the storylines of this arc rather than the plot. I think yeah. the because like the dragon cards were cool. What it was always cool to see what kind of combinations they had. Um, and there was even then the foreshadowing to the final arc, because you see um, darts in the past watching the, you know, because by that point, the manga was at that point. It's probably why they threw that in there, because they were at that point already, which makes you wonder why didn't they just go into the Millennium World right there? But I guess it wasn't completely finished yet. That's why we needed Casey for a few more episodes. Um, but yeah, Doma, it's... It's not my favorite thing to rewatch. I think, again, there's a lot of some plot holes or like plot inconveniences, like, again. But Pegasus dueling Kaiba was kind of cool because even though it was in Pyramid of Light, you know, Japanese audiences didn't see that till I think after this point. So it was kind of cool to see Pegasus get to fight Kaiba, which was cool. Um, yeah, one, one character I wanted to bring up and just get your opinion on that we have not talked about at all which I feel like we need to before we move on, is Darts. I mean, he was oh, the a th the villain of this arc, the orchestrator. Um, we have not brought him up. I know there are some people that love Darts as a villain and as a character. Some people view him as one of the strongest villains in, in the franchise. Um, I am not one of those, pe I am not one I of those people. <laughs> um, not to say I didn't like darts i just felt like the original Yu-Gi-Oh, especially had a lot more um better developed and just m villains that i enjoyed more um darts's deck was crazy it will always be one of the more um ridiculous decks in terms of the anime that we've ever seen some of his monsters reaching just these insane attack points infinite before eventually attack. <laughs> yes before eventually summoning serpent god gay which had infinite attack points but rarity what were your thoughts on darts as a character and as the oh, villain darts? of this arc? uh i don't know if i have too much to say about him i like his design <laughs> i really I, I think i keep saying this i like the character designs for a lot of the original characters they added into the dm anime like uh, rebecca i always liked how she looked um i love leon and Siegfried. we'll talk about them visually in the we'll talk about the kc arc um, but I thought that Darts was okay. I think it's sort of because it's sort of like another villain from the ancient past coming in. Because, you know, Anubis did that. We have Bakora, right? It kind of takes away from Bakora just a little bit because that was mainly his gimmick. That he was someone from the Pharaoh's past. And True. while, yes, Darts never affected the Pharaoh directly, but he was there. And again, it kind of just is this whole other ancient evil, but it is kind of cool to see other cultures and what other magic exists in this world other than Egyptian magic. Yeah, I so, also don't, very well said there, I also don't love the villains that sit back for really the entire arc and then yeah, only get like involved nothing. at the very end. And I feel like that was kind of what Darts did, right? He sent his cronies out, which Raphael Valen and... Um, Oh my, I, I always know. forget. Alistair or Melma? A Alistair, right. I, I I forget both of their names. Um, I just remember the, the pinkish hair. But um, yeah, the, <laughs> the three cronies out. I feel like while well, those characters were all unique and cool in their own ways and had their own backstories, you know, Darts just kind of stood back as like, oh, I'll, I'll act when they finally reach me, he which was will, more of course, be at the end of the show. He's uh, the one who the bought Kaiba Corp, so he was more the businessman running the the, the totally uh, world-influencing company that hasn't been brought up before now. <laughs> right, of course, of course, yeah. And um, No, but I, I always prefer, like, the Mariks or the Vectors or the Bakoras, even, who are more involved and intricate in the, in the plot and in the storyline mm -hmm. as the show develops and are not just, like, the final boss. And, uh, yeah, so I, I didn't really love that about, about Darts, but... I like darts. I definitely do not think he's close to being one of the best villains in the franchise. But you guys let us know. I know there's a lot of you watching right now that probably disagree with, with us on his character, that, that love darts. There's people that swear by this arc. There's people that think that the Doma arc is the strongest arc in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters, which, mm -hmm. you know, I also don't necessarily agree I with. I also but, don't agree with. <laughs> yeah, but please let us know your thoughts on this arc um, mm -hmm. down below. I thought it was good. But it's certainly below Battle City and Duelist Kingdom for me, um, just comparing it to the other arcs of Duel Monsters. And for Rarity, it's below, I assume, Virtual World for you as well, right? I, yeah, I'd, I'd say, yeah, it's probably my least favorite arc out of the entire... Because, as I said in the manga video... Well, actually, this is the anime. Do I have a different opinion? Do I have a different opinion about the Millennium World? I mean, the Millennium World got an expansion because they gave it more a little bit more time. And I really like... Um, so we'll get to that when we get to that at the end. Um, but I do like it more than the, I do like the next arc more, which is the KC Grand Championship, which I thought was just a nice little, um, little 
you know, fun ride before we get to the... It wasn't too long. The decks were cool. Seeing Rebecca get to do cool stuff. The, the fairy tale deck was cool. The Valkyrie deck was cool. And again, it gives Kaiba one more... Well, it's actually his last duels against Bakura. I forgot about that. And with some of the most meme faces in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! is, is in that one. <laughs> um, that That's duel, right. episode 200, yeah. yeah. Um, I gave Joey another duel. I gave Kaiba some more focus. Um, it was just kind of cool to see Kaiba land, though. Really just to see Kaiba land. So it's just a fun little arc. You know, it's, it's not something super grand, but I don't think it was trying to be. It was just going to be a fun little arc before we get to the big heavy stuff. Yeah, I believe it's like 13-ish episodes. It's around that that long. So it's nothing it's nothing crazy in terms of length. But yeah, this is an arc that, you know, it's it's short. Um, but I actually did enjoy this arc quite a bit. I, I love Siegfried. Um, I really, really like his character a lot. And I love how they, they made him seem like such a genuine threat in such a short period of time. The way that they presented his debut duel against Weevil and Rex is one of the best debut yes. duels that I've ever seen where he's got these monsters summons them doesn't say what they are doesn't say their effects and then next thing we know Weevil and Rex are defeated and we're all yeah, left wondering like oh my god like what the hell are these monsters what are their effects and then we learn more about them when he duels Joey and then he pulls off really the shocker I, I really thought Joey was gonna win I thought Joey was gonna win get through this arc and I thought it was honestly gonna end with Yugi versus Joey um to see it mm -hmm. one last time so when Siegfried beat Joey I was very very surprised and then of course Kaiba steps in and then we have Leon you know Siegfried's younger brother you've talked about the similar dynamics there with Siegfried and Leon as with Seto and Mokuba um but yeah I mean overall it is just a fun arc and it's a mini tournament and it's one that I really enjoy um and that's because I really did enjoy Siegfried's character and mm -hmm. presentation in the early goings Oh, yeah, he is, like, number one. Again, great character design. Um, it's yep. also cool that, um, again, expanding upon the world, like, that Schroeder Corp is, like, the number one gaming company in Europe, right? He's the European champion, right? Because Rebecca's the American champion. We, It kind of shows that Duel Monsters is an international phenomenon, not just kind of stuck to America and Japan, right? I really liked... Um, like, I really liked the showcase of, like, Leon. Like, he was kind of the sleeper kid. Like, oh, he was relevant to the subplot. I know, like, looking back at it now, it was pretty obvious. They wouldn't have introduced him so early if he didn't have a part to play. But, like, the... And then there's the, the Golden Castle of Strongburg thing. That card's insane and in how yes. um, Atem defeated it with just having one card left in the deck. You cannot cut this thing in half. It is impossible. <laughs> and he found a way to overcome it, as Atem usually does. And... Like, his abilities as a hacker, I think, are, like, terrifying. Like, if Kaiba didn't have, like, those good backups, then his data could have been lost forever. And it was just, again, really interesting to see him. And the Valkyrie deck is super, super cool, as is Leon's fairy tale deck as well. Which I always thought, as a fairy tale lover myself, I absolutely love there's just this deck of these just random fairy tale cards. Because it seems like something Pegasus would totally make. Which... Speaking of Pegasus, we haven't talked about the fact that they used him because he didn't die. <laughs> Which, I don't know about you, Dylan. I think that was like the best decision the anime made was keeping Pegasus alive. Because then I, he got I to agree. do something GX. I agree. Because it had a he, ripple effect, right? It had a ripple effect into GX. And then, you know, he was mentioned um, on time as in, well. five, in 5Ds. Like, it, it definitely had a good ripple effect. So yeah, keeping Pegasus alive, one of my favorite villains. Um, yeah, we didn't really talk about Duelist Kingdom at all because it is very similar to the manga, which we already discussed in depth. But that was a big different element, keeping the, the Pegasus alive. Thing, yeah, I fully agree. Great decision. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing there in Duelist Kingdom, aside from having the shoddy stuff was there, is Joey and Yugi's duel. Because well, that, that wasn't yep, in the manga. Yep. Yeah, which I remember like seeing like... The, like, that duel was really cool to see Joey's growth as a duelist. Obviously, he didn't win, um, but because obviously the plot demanded it. But it was cool to really see that duel. The other um, things they had, um, again, me being biased, uh, there was more Kaiba Brothers lore in there. They squeezed in. Um, and again, I think seeing Kaiba and Mokuba's relationship is always good. Because in the anime, they don't have, like, that fracturedness that they did in the manga. Because Def T doesn't happen in the anime. So you just get to see them just kind of just always being buds, which is always fun. But yeah, and Battle City's not too different either, as far as I'm aware. I don't think there's too much they changed. They might have added some like character dialogue. Like I know Mokuba goes to the duel to watch Kaiba, which he does it in the manga, right? 
And um, obviously, oh yeah, the Joey and Kaiba duel in Battle City was amazing. I love that duel, the, the, the yes, battle for the bronze, as the dub calls it. Yeah. Um, that was a great duel for for Joey. Um, also, Kaiba getting to pull off his virus combo, which he hasn't since Duelist Kingdom. So it was cool to see that because he, I think he literally says in the manga that doing it against Yugi would have been like an insult or something. Like he's already beaten it once. It's fine. Um, Joey, though, you get to have my full anger. And you get to see um, that just, I really just like they have that duel as well. So that was really cool. Again, the extra duels they added for like Joey in particular, I thought were really great. Um, there's just, again, a lot more. And then the Rebecca and Yugi duel in season one was also nice. I liked that as well. Um, there's also the Joey and Duke duel, right? That wasn't in the manga either, right? They're just giving Joey extra duels left and right. That's just his um, thing, I guess. Um, getting to see him, which is always fun. And yeah, and, uh, yeah. Both of those duels fit very, very well to the point that I, it was years later that I found out and realized they did not happen in the manga because they ju they just fit. I, I mean, I watched the anime first, but they just fit so well. Um, it, it, it's it's one of those things that if you never watched, never read the manga, you would never think that they were anime only duels. They did not feel exactly. shoehorned in any sort no. of way. Exactly. And I think that they were wonderful additions to the anime and really getting to, again, expand upon those elements, right? Like adding in extra flashbacks. Like we, I think we see a few more with um, Shizuka or um, Serenity and Joey, I believe in Duel's Kingdom, right? Like them going to the beach, I think was um, anime only as well. And they get to see Joey being hesitant to go to the hospital, right? And Honda gets to punch him in the face. <laughs> Um, and things like that. Like, there's little extra moments that I think the anime took very well advantage of to expand. But aside from making major deviations, I think the most major deviation in terms of the core storyline for the manga, right, is Kaiba showing up at the end in the memory world because he wasn't there. But as much, because this obviously means DSOD can't happen in the anime timeline, which it doesn't. But I think Kaiba getting to go back to the past of everyone was a great decision. At least for, its an for the anime, what it was trying to do. Because it was just really, really nice to get, again, to see see his past self and really get to see, like, okay, I can't deny this is fake any longer. This is real. <gasps> this is this is it. And he gets yep. to... And there's a, there's a moment, we'll talk about this in the dub, of, I'll probably have a whole top 10 list of Kaiba's best one-liners because <sighs> that's a whole fun thing in and of itself. But it was nice for him to get to see that, get to even fight Zork with Blue-Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Like, yo, that was sick. And combining his power with Preseto and Kasara's as well. Beautiful, beautiful there. And even during the ceremonial duel at the him basically disregarding um, Yugi a little bit. And then he gets to really acknowledge that, similar to what he does in DSOD as well. But having him there, I can understand why. Obviously because of, um, you know, Kaiba's popularity as a character. But I do think that having him there did help. And some of the extra stuff they added to the um, to the Millennium World storyline as well. A few extra, like, little expansions. Though there was this part in the manga they took out where, um, you know, there's that brief duel between Preseto and um, Atem with, like, the Karibo thing. So you get to see um, a another Kaiba get underestimated Karibo and get his butt kicked. Because <laughs> Karibo's the MVP, right? Um, so... I think that was something I wish they would have included, considering they added a few extra things anyway. Um, like, you see a Tem with a sword, and like, fighting on horseback, I think, with Mana. I don't think that happens in the manga, from what I remember, but that's just cool that to see a Tem ride around. And I think that that arc, I think, had the most changes, because the, the duel with Seto happens before Zork shows up. Well, in the right. manga, it's after, right? Yep, and again, yep. Kaiba being there. And getting to be for the ceremonial battle, I think it, it feels right. Because, again, you get that closure, right? And then the last part of the final episode where you see everyone where they are, what they're doing, right? Like, you can see Siegfried and Leon talking to Pegasus. You see Mai. You see Rebecca. You know, seeing all the old characters, it just it warms your heart, right? Similar, I think, to previous endings, like of um, Brains is ending a little bit, right? I, I always love that in endings where you kind of just see where everybody is. So I agree. I, I yeah, five Ds that. did it as well, except they didn't yep. show you say. But right, uh, yeah, it is so. a cool thing to mm -hmm. do. And uh, yeah, I mean that that Millennium World arc was um, was certainly interesting. I mean, if you didn't watch our our video on the manga, you know, it's important to note that Takahashi was sick when he was writing that arc in the manga, um, and that definitely kind of affected some things. And and that arc is um, is interesting because it's. 
an arc that does not rely on dueling at all, which is very unique to the anime. Not necessarily unique to the manga, because it'll just remind you of the early portions of the manga. But if you're watching the anime, it is very weird to have five, Whole six, seven, episodes. eight episodes in a row where there are no duels. Now, you li I know you were a fan of the Millennium World arc, and obviously there were a few changes in, in this arc. Mm -hmm. I, I still love it. Um, I would say that the uh, Millennium World arc, I like both of them for different reasons. I think some of the extra anime content is nice. Um, I do think that, again, they involved um, Presetto a lot more in the anime as well because they kind of moved him around because he wasn't present during the Zork final battle, but he was in the anime. They're kind of just including a few more things. They gave, like, him and Kasara got to meet his kids, which doesn't happen in the manga at all. They gave Kasara a little bit more agency, which I liked. Um, it was always nice to see her. I liked she got, again, to meet Kaiba. I think those little additions helped just further enhance that whole experience. It's also interesting that the final, like the final shadow game doesn't happen in the museum. It's just in the, the place um, where the, the stone was, Right. which right. I was talking to a friend about this and they think that was more fitting than the museum because that's originally where the, the tablet was supposed to be. But then you don't have the whole actual RPG table. Um, but it, w it was a cool visual to see a Temen Bakora literally on a Millennium Puzzle table floating in the middle of the Shadow Realm or whatever you call it, you know. And like the world's literally like getting destroyed. That was cool too. They added that the present was getting affected by the past. Which doesn't happen in the manga because that's just, I think, a closed Shadow game as opposed to, I think, more direct um, influence on the future. I suppose. I think that's probably why. But it was cool to see, like, I remember there was always a scene where Mokuba and, and Aizana were flying into the, 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 the thunderstorm because they were looking for Kaiba because he just left to Egypt without really telling anybody. <laughs> as, right, as he do, right. as he do, as, and then he, sh and then you see a Shizu and Merrick where he freaking gets, he has the, oh yeah, he has the Millennium Eye and you actually see him see some of the memory world through um, Akhenaten's Millennium Eye for a second. That's what gets him to go to Egypt and drop everything yes. and go to Egypt. Really cool little stuff there. Um, and it's interesting, again, the Millennium Eye is what was chosen for Kaiba to have because number one, Pegasus, but number two, because of um, Akhenaten. So, and who obviously was his past life's father um, as well. I feel, I don't think Akhenaten, Akhenaten got to do as much in the anime compared to the manga because he's more, you know, like the priest of darkness, right? He kind of just gets taken care of before Zork even shows up in the anime. But yeah, I think the Duel Monsters anime is fantastic. Even if the final arc, it had some of the best animation in the openings and endings with the actual production quality of the actual duels. Like season five overall doesn't look as good because I think they were either lower budget or they switched, I think, to either digital color because Kaiba's coat is gray now instead of white and it doesn't look as good. The gray just doesn't look as good on him. There were some color palette differences. I'm not quite sure what the production yeah. was. I'm sure some of our um, production people in the community could probably tell us more about that than I could. But there was definitely a difference in the way it was animated after season four. Yeah, it's an interesting observation for sure. Yeah, the anime um, ultimately was uh, good. I, I still, you know, when I look at all seven Yu-Gi-Oh's, it, it's, it's in the middle for me. It's in that like three to five range um, in comparison to the other shows. Um, while the original manga is obviously one of my, if not my favorite piece of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! media. So I do think that the filler arcs, um, you know, in comparison to the manga, while they, you know, it, it's kind of a mixed bag. Because I do feel like the filler arcs gave us obviously more content, which is always nice. But I feel like some of that content, for me at least, was of course mixed. Talked about my issues with the Big Five and, and mm -hmm. the virtual world. Yeah. Um, but the positive of it, of course, is the, the Kaiba family. Mm -hmm. And then the you know, Doma arc, some characters acting out of behavior, but you got cool stories for like Mai that you didn't really get in the manga that I, I really liked. And of course the, mm -hmm. the Doma three characters working under darts were also um, really cool in their own ways yeah. and their stories were cool. Um, and then the KC Grand Prix was, was cool. You know, there were some things I could have done without Vivian Wong. You know, uh, probably yeah. could have, <laughs> could have, they could have kept her on the sidelines, but you know, um, like, overall, it still, I think, holds up as one of the, the better Yu-Gi-Oh! shows, ex ex for sure. A thousand percent. And I think, again, we talked about the music at the beginning. The music is incredible. Um, the voice yes. acting is great. Um, the openings and endings are really good. Um, that's kind of in there as well. And I think that I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, Dylan. It's in my top three, and I don't think it's going to move from that spot. Um, my number three spot for me. Um, but I honestly kind of like that we have a difference. Because we get 
If you count the four kids though, it's a different version of the show, which I do. We have three completely different versions of the same st core story to experience. And I don't think a lot of anime, and they're all good in their own ways. Um, so it's just, I think that's really, really cool. And it's always fun seeing the differences, seeing those little nuggets of information. You can kind of say, okay, maybe this could have been canon in the other version as well. Kind of like that crossover kind of aspect and of incorporating all the things, which I think our creative community has done really well of combining different elements of the canons together. I've certainly seen it myself. Like, um, we'll talk about this in the four kids video, but Mokuba, um, Kaiba calling Mokuba Moki as a kid, top 10 decision, um, adorable. And then he lost it when he became more cold and traumatized and I'm sad. Um, but <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll get probably yeah. more into that probably in the four kids video, but it's just it's just nice to have multiple versions of the same show, and it's still the story of Yu-Gi-Oh at its core, and it still has the same great message of unity, bringing people together, um, drawing people together with love of games and overcoming hatred with the power of friendship and love and all that all that good stuff. So, Duel yeah, Monsters yeah. is great. Before we go, I guess we should say, do you have a favorite duel that was anime only, would you say? Because my favorite anime only duel, my favorite anime only duel is probably the, the Kaiba Joey duel. That's probably my favorite. That's a good one. For me, it is definitely um, Yugi Raphael part one. Um, I, 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 I just the, the shock factor of him actually losing. And of course, you know, the element of the character attempt doing what he did is definitely sus given you know the prior three seasons but there's just something about that duel that is so shocking and and unexpected and and magical that um that it's one of my favorites in the show mm -hmm. um that's that's definitely my favorite manga only duel yeah yeah well, I think that probably wraps it up for us, unless you have anything yeah. else. Um, but yeah, Duel Monster is always a special place. If you have not seen the Japanese version, I believe all of it is on Crunchyroll. So I believe it is that is a legal way to stream it, but we also know the power of the internet, right? So just go give yourself a favor and watch it. It's a great ride, great performances. I think Kaiba's Seiyu is one of the most popular VAs in Japan for a reason. He's incredible. Um, get to see those iconic moments and iconic um, stories that you may have seen from the original dub that you saw as a kid in a completely different way. And I think it's just really cool to kind of see the differences and all of that good stuff. So thank you for again having me, Dylan. Always a pleasure. And I look forward to the next video we do, whichever we decide is next, because we're still on the DM train because we still have probably at least three more videos left because we have Yu-Gi-Oh! R. We've got the four kids stuff and we probably have season zero because we cannot forget about season zero before we jump on to GX. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Rarity, for joining me. I'll link uh, Rarity's channel down below. Definitely check it out. Thank you guys all for joining. If you're still listening, um, probably close to an hour in, um, it is definitely appreciated. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed our, our thoughts on, uh, you know, Duel Monsters. It's funny because I still feel like there's so much to talk about. The these videos really... Um, to me are starting to feel condensed even though they're 40 50 minutes it just shows that you could really talk about these shows for hours um, with, with with content and it's it's amazing and that that's what I love about these uh, these shows and stories they're all wonderful mm -hmm. in their own way but this has been appreciating Yu-Gi-Oh uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters of course the Japanese version definitely check it out on Crunchyroll if you haven't thank you all for watching let me know all your thoughts down below and I hope you have an, an amazing, amazing day. day take care guys